Caden. Jews. Hello. In. Yeah. Slap. Yeah, man. Come What's on, up? brother. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad. I've come over to Melbourne with no video ideas at all, mm. but we're down here kicking snags. We did a video on your channel. We did. Little game of our horse. Yep. But I didn't have anything, and I thought while we were here, let's let's make a video. You've seen plenty of Q and A's in the past, and they get a bit boring. So I'm going to change it to a K and A, kick and answer. That's so unreal. yeah, we're just going to have a have a chat and have a kick. Yeah, as simple perfect. as that. You started out doing videos like this, Caden. The um, channel is founded on goal kicking videos and mm. whatnot. That's how I found your channel. I was a little anorexic 17 year old just scrolling through YouTube and saw a bit of goal recreation stuff. Yep. A few years down the track, it's it's blown up, and we'll get to that as we as we go around the arc. But what was the first sort of goal kicking challenges that you did, and how did you get into that sort of stuff? Uh, just copying the UK, as yeah. you know. Like we speak about the UK YouTube scene, like the side man Joe Waller doing his um, penalty shootouts, and for me, like Theo Baker would do penalty recreation. So yeah. um, I pinched that idea, tried to make it a little bit of like a little bit of my own. But like your Chris MD type of videos, yeah. that's what we're after. Um, and then that first goal recreation. Would have had 150 views in a week. I put it out in the middle of January because all my mates were on uni break and whatnot. And then what's it on now then? Like 500,000. There views. you go. And it was just crazy <laughs> because like at the time that would have been a eight of ten. Yeah. But now it just grows and grows and grows. And I remember it was one point in the middle of the year. I looked and I was like, it's had 40,000 views in a month. Like that's, that's yeah, sort of crazy. Right. Even though it's like two years old. And then um, yeah, they started to snowball. So you've put a patent on it. You're a king of AFL trick shots. Maybe not the set shots, which no, I picked you in last not. time we faced off. But why don't you just show us right now your best shot you've got from here, son? I'm a big snap man now. I'm a big snap man these, these days. So I'm going to go a big arcing Jackie Ginnivan, Harry Mackay type snap. Let's set the tone. Josie was saying before, I've been in awful goal kicking form in the last couple of weeks. For the last little bit, I'm slotting them today. It's been um, unbelievable. So we've been filming lots of goal kicking videos today and Caden is automatic today. I've never it's seen crazy. a man ooze so much charisma in front of goal. I'm trying to miss. Like I'm trying to make sure <laughs> that this isn't a simulation and I'm not an alien, but I can't and it's um, it's great. Started out with goal kicking challenges. Now look, you're at Phil and Friends Studios, Producer Jesus. Studios, Spotify original podcast. How has the, the YouTube grind been? What's the difference between a couple of years ago to now? Because it's everything that you've worked for. Like, it's yeah. not a surprise that you're in the position you're in now. You've put in the reps. Mm. What's the what's the grind been like, the hustle? Uh, the grind's the best. Myself, yourself, we always talk about how you don't want to be that Olympian with gold medal depression. Like, we don't want to be <laughs> like, life's not good unless we're on like driven footy. by the the reward like yeah. your whole goal is that reward yeah i, I don't want to be like youtube sucks but it's my life will get better when i get to fox footy or triple m or anything i yeah. want to enjoy what i'm doing at the moment and i can't say any like enough how much i'm enjoying this year like coming up doing the podcast trying to juggle youtube i've been doing a little bit less youtube but been liking what i'm putting out i'm loving the balance of tiktok instagram's been growing i feel like i've become a bit more of a rounded creator. So I'm just having an absolute ball and um, the grind's the best part. Like I call Druzy sometimes and I'll be like, mate, I'm getting no views. No one's watching my TikToks. <laughs> I can't string, Relatable. A, can't string a sentence together on the podcast, but I can improve. Yeah. And, and this is the exciting part is, um, you know, the boxer that gets knocked down, you get back up. Like that's, that's the fun part where you're like, all right, bite down on the gum shield, let's crack back in. So that's what we love. Room for improvement. I need a bit of room for improvement because my set shots have been pretty wacky recently. Yeah, talk about the box that got knocked down. You need to improve some of these goal oh, kicking. I've, I've you been need to about, this. Yeah, I've been TKO'd today. Yeah, I'm still yeah. gonna go off a couple steps, nothing crazy. So we're talking about the grind. We love the grind, but what's made it easier for you this year? You've got big Baz in. There's oh. a couple more oil in this machine right now than there ever has been before, and that's what's contributing to your success as we um, speak. I think collaborating with people throughout the years have been amazing. All the boys that used to hop on the channel and are sort of still regulars of the channel, like your Van Gamps, your Bowl of Chips, your Cooksons. Getting other people in on the channel is so much fun. Mm. Um, you start to tick over to 25, 26, and all those boys, they get a job, they, yeah. they sort of get a little bit busier, they finish uni, and now all of a sudden you're a 25-year-old man trying to get the boys to hang out and film videos on Tuesday, Arvo. <laughs> and it doesn't quite work. So 
Um, Bailey, who is my cameraman at the minute, um, just DM'd me from Ballarat. And, um, Bailey he, from Ballarat? Bailey from Ballarat. Million dollar Bailey. He's been on the podcast the last couple of weeks giving me a chop out. So even like, talk about the grind, he's just been making relationships with people in the industry. Yeah. And it, it's taken him to great opportunities, but also like Connor Rogers, he's always been around the channel. Um, and now I would almost say that him and Bailey, even though it's an unofficial term, but I'd almost say that they're producers of yeah. the channel. We always flick ideas to each other in the group inbox. They're always up to film. And I feel like it's the best content I've ever made. Like I know <laughs> I that potentially it hasn't got the views, um, but there's definitely been a shift, like a mature shift mm -hmm. in the YouTube channel and a more sustainable shift. And I feel like the stuff that I'm making now, I can make for the next 10 years. When I reckon the stuff I was making three years ago Tier wasn't sustainable. And, yeah. yeah, AFL career sort of stuff. I feel like I'm getting that momentum and that trust with the audience back, which is so much fun. Collaboration is where it's at. We're gonna collaborate on this one. You roll it into me, I'll get the ground ball. Handball back, you snag. What snag? Like a snap? Just go with what you feel, cousin. Right, let's go. Yes, Dossington. So 21, you left radio school, is that right? Yep. Yep, you left radio school and you've told me before, you felt like you, the opportunities just weren't coming. That everyone was just hating on C. McDonald. Six years down the line, you've grinded, you grafted away and now you've got your own Spotify special. Yep. What advice would you give to people to, to find their, their way in an industry like this? I don't know, I feel like it's almost, um, it's potentially unteachable, but I had this sort of deep, dark inner belief that I could yeah. do it. I could get it done. Delusional, and, delusional belief. And naivety. Yeah. Like I was like, mate, I'm gonna be the next Hamish and Andy. And this is when I'm <laughs> doing a little six month radio course. I end the course and I'm like, why aren't I Hamish and Andy? It's like, <laughs> mate, you drive a shitty car. You've got no money to your name. Like there's no way I would have been in that situation. Yeah. So, even though it's taken four or five years since then, it's made sense why it has. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm at a position now to really give this podcasting game a fair crack with Goes All Right. And I'm now sort of mature enough and comfortable enough to do some good interviews and get some good content going. Mm -hmm. So um, it feels like the path was almost already set out for me. And I, I was trying to jump the queue and and get something that I wasn't ready for. And, and then when you, you fast forward five years down the track, it's like, Ah, oh, there's a reason why it's taken that long. Yeah. There's a reason why there's a bit of a journey. And now I'm better placed for it now. So yeah, just pumped and loving it. And I just want to make a good fist of it, really. In this world, McDonald, you are not owed a thing by anyone. So <laughs> coming good. coming out of That's out good. of radio school, or like me coming out of uni, it's like, why aren't I doing the best job ever right now? Because I feel like I'm owed it. Like a lot of people have that mindset. Yeah. I think everyone does at some point. Yeah. When did you have that point of realization that, you know, me sitting in my room isn't cutting it. I want to have to bite down on the mouthpiece and just get yeah. to work. And how did your mindset shift from the start where you were sort of feeling like you were owed something to yeah. let's just get going. I have to do this off my own back here. Geez, I've got 15 quotes to come off the back of that. Um, <laughs> Let's go, reel them off. So mentally, I was in a compare and despair mindset. I was okay. looking around at the radio industry and seeing people off Love Island, people off The Bachelor get gigs, and mm -hmm. I'm like, well, they're not volunteering at community radio, and they're not, um, it's a little bit like boxers and Jake Paul. Like, Jake yeah. Paul's getting big fights, and boxers who have, where no one watches are going, why, why isn't that me? I'm better than him, and I that, could do that. That was me in terms of the radio course, uh, or the radio industry. It got to a point where, I was complaining to my lecturer. I went up and had a coffee and he goes, mate, there's no reason in 2016 we can't have a YouTube channel and a podcast. Yeah. And literally that week I started a YouTube channel. And I think what got me excited to do the YouTube channel was I was almost like, well, this is my resume. So mm -hmm. it might not take 100 videos or 200 videos or 300 videos. It might take, I think I'm up to like six, 700 videos and I've finally got the gig yeah. in the podcasting industry. So, but I think if you asked me at 21, all right, you make 700 videos and you get a job at Dill Buckley's doing podcasting, interviewing AFL players. I would have been like, sweet, let's start. And yeah. that's sort of the mindset I had. So you just got to be able to have that inner belief because there's so many people that go, mate, why aren't you stacking shelves or why aren't you doing something or what you think you're going to be on radio and TV and on podcasts. Yeah. And that's where you just need something in you to be like, well, I am. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know where that came from, but I'm glad I had it. The way that I think of it, like I'm 21, I don't know too much, but the way my mindset is, is like, 
whatever you want to do, you can do if you put in the reps. There's a Russell Brand quote that I love, as your attention goes, so shall you become. So you might be sitting in your room on a Tuesday filming some AFL Evo vids and people might be thinking, what the hell? But you're thinking of that, that long-term goal and that's mm. put you in the position that you are in now. And it's no surprise, as I said before, that you are because all of those days of thoughts, those mm. those sunset walks, you know, those... Yeah. Um, like, yeah, so just many the daydreaming. Times, so many times, like, I, I went for daydreams, picturing this. So many times I went... Like, I'd, I'd go for, for walks and I'd be picturing people coming up and asking for my photo and signature and it would just warm my heart and I'd be listening to one, listening to one Direction going, oh, that'd be cool one day. <laughs> and I, I'd picture, like, people interviewing me and I'd be like, oh, and I, it used to be um, Geelong's local radio going oh Caden you've made it in uh, uh, in YouTube how's that and <laughs> now be, it's Truzy <laughs> I'd be answering questions and now you know I'm on podcasts a couple of times a week answering the questions that I was practicing answering five years ago so <laughs> that manifestation and backing yourself in stuff is real I reckon um, turning and, dreams into reality yeah exactly right and it is hard and, and you know there are ups and downs um, but we talk all the time about how the, the shit times is where you're like cool like, yeah all right cool that's like, where you get growth, right? 100%. And if you can enjoy that part of it, it means you love what you're doing. Like, I hate Saturdays and Sundays because all I want to do is wait for Monday to wake up and crack in. Yeah. And we talk about that all the time. Like, you were saying once, you're like, oh, it's funny that people live for two days of the week. Yeah. Like, they go, oh, I want to get Monday through Friday over. So and then let loose. Let loose. And, and you were saying to me, it's cool that you live for every day of the week because, you know, Saturday you go and film and vlog the footy. Um, Tuesday, like you're doing something. Yeah, so editing, like, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, it's crazy I'm in this situation. Um, I do hope that me cracking in, you know, copping all the, the comments, copping everything I copped early, um, can open the door for other people to do it as well. And I think we're starting to see a real groundswell of creators on TikTok and YouTube doing a bit of footy stuff. And I don't know if it's fully sustainable, I'm still figuring that out um, in terms of financially, and it, it sort of has been at the minute. Uh, but if I can sort of make something of it, I reckon it opens the door for so many people who will be better than me to do it. So I'm excited by that as well. Well, you have done that. Look at AFL YouTube now, your card mans, your Mitch, yeah. oh, Mitchie Ryan's a bit less than he was earlier. But like me. Well, especially TikTok as well. Like there's so many people who do footy TikTok. Um, obviously your prime trains and, and whatnot are on another level. Like they're a level above me, to be honest, the way that they um, curate their content and their merch and stuff. So I'm inspired by them. But there's so many other creators with 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 followers on TikTok in six, seven months doing yeah. footy stuff. And they're young and they're exciting. And I think that's just so good for the platform. Mate, you're a pioneer. You're the Conor McGregor of AFL YouTube. But can you slot this snag right now is the question. Absolutely. <laughs> I went the top. I was inspired by my own speech. I thought I could do anything. What advice would you give to yourself five years ago? What would you have been? 22 year old schmacker that he could have used or someone around that same age to just follow what they want to do and actually enjoy their, their craft? See, literally, I think myself five years ago, who I think you've probably seen on YouTube, I think he had the drive and the idea and sort of the ambition to crack in and get it done. The only thing that I would say is keep going. Because yeah, obviously yeah. there's times where you're doing it and you're like, geez, I'm struggling to afford enough to go to Lammy's for the third time this week. <laughs> I'm struggling to afford this chicken panini. Um, and then it's those times where you just tell yourself, oh, I'm just going to keep going with it because I think there's something at the end of it. Um, so I think the best advice would be for me to go back, give myself the biggest rap and just reassurance that if you keep chipping away, it'll work. But I think I somehow knew that deep down because that's why I kept going. So, yeah. It's that uh, picture of that miner cracking into yeah. the wall. One's and, and, packed up, he's gone for the day. Yeah. And you're just <laughs> digging away with all the motivation in the world. Yeah, literally spot on. And I was someone who was like, I think there's something behind this wall. And mm -hmm. everyone's telling me, mate, no one's done that before. Um, you know, there's not that much of a fan base. The ceiling's too low. Like, what are you talking about? But I did keep picking up my pickaxe and making some average videos at the start, but the wall kept, you know, slowly yeah. getting chipped away at. Um, and now I feel like, I don't even feel like I've made the jewelry or the riches yet, but I feel like I can sort of hear it behind the wall and I'm still now just hammering. You're a trailblazer, McDonald, and out of YouTube, I've met you. And th this is what we do it for, meet the people. Yeah. Friendships for life, I've come over to Melbourne and it's like I've known you, even though I've only met you three times in my life. Well, but it was funny, the first time you came over, and then literally didn't feel like I hadn't seen you for that long because we talk 
quite consistently about a lot of this stuff and about like cracking in and um, trying to forge a path in this wild, wild world. And then you pop back over and it's like, well, I was just talking to you last week. It yeah. doesn't feel that much different. So yeah, well, this is what we do it for, to, to build relationships, meet like-minded people and support each other having a crack at this stuff. So uh, yeah, we, we love this. We love the grind. The pioneer, the trailblazer, the Conor McGregor, the Caden McDonald. Thank you for the, for the K&A. Beautiful, you missed mate. your last one, so I'm going to give you the opportunity here to, to snag this one. <laughs> I threw the Acker out the window and just went on instinct. And it flew through. Keep going on instinct. Keep having that inner belief. Long may success come to you, C. McDonald. Thanks for your time. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. Beautiful. Check out Katie McDonald's channel, even though you absolutely know who this bloke is. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care, you plonkers. Thanks, Chief Hart. Yay. <laughs>